What's up, guys? This is Cody, a.k.a. DFS Prodigy, coming to you live to talk about the upcoming DraftKings slate for the Wednesday night football game. You're right, Wednesday night football. We're not used to that at all. We're not used to seeing basically this ever. And now we have the COVID players. We still have possibly this game not playing, so on and so forth. So we're just going to kind of break it down. Just in case it does play, it's looking all signs ported towards it does play. Like I said, let's just dig right into it. We have Big Ben at the very top. So Rossesberger has thrown over 30 times a game, which I'm liking him a lot. In the captain slot, he's a little bit tough to get to at 17,000. But at 11,000 in the flex spot, I don't mind him at all. I like him a lot, given I'm going to play one of his receivers more than likely in the captain slot. As a core play, I don't know which one I'm going to lean towards yet. It depends on Juju's status for this game. But so on and so forth, I like Big Ben in the flex spot. We have Lamar Jackson now out, so we'll move on to RG3 once we hit his salary point. But going down towards the receivers for Pittsburgh, Deontay Johnson is more so a air yard threat. He's not really an end zone threat, more so like Chase Claypool is. I mean, we've seen his targets, 12 receptions, 6 receptions, 6, 16 targets last game. I'm all over him as an option. Deontay Johnson more than likely might be in my captain. If not, I'm going to a guy like Chase Claypool. Who Claypool is basically the end zone threat. One touchdown, two touchdowns, and one touchdown. We see him against Baltimore. He got 42 yards, one TD. I love him a lot. I like him easily. I might play him in the captain slot. Like I said, I might play him in, in the flex spot. I'm not sure yet. This depends on roster to construction. Juju is pointing to all signs towards playing. We see him last time that he played Baltimore against Marlon Humphrey, which was – a good game for him. He had 67 yards, so I don't mind him at all either. The toe, like I said, looks good. I don't mind Juju. If I had to pick, though, it would be Deontay Johnson slash Claypool, then Juju. But going on to Biddy Snell now. Biddy Snell is now starting with James Carter out. I'm not on the Biddy Snell trade. I think people are going to flock to him because of who he is. Basically, they're going to say, ooh, he's starting. But I'm not going to do that. I don't like him in the spot against the Ravens. I don't like that price tag at all for me. I'm not on him. RG3 is 8,400, and he's suiting up as a starter now with Lamar Jackson having COVID. I like RG3 to a point. I think he has the rushing upside. I don't mind him at all in the flex spot. J.K. Dobbins is all signs pointing to him towards playing, so he should be activated. I don't mind him at all. 15 attempts, 12 attempts. He looks as a lead back now. But this is the Steelers' defense that scares me a lot, and that 7,200 price tag, it's not a good sign towards me. Mark Andrews has COVID, and he is officially out for this game. So moving on now to the next tight end is Eric Ebron. Eric Ebron has been amazing this season for the Steelers. He's earned his contract a lot. I mean, seven targets, six targets, six targets, five targets. The targets are all there. He's been pretty good this season, and I like him a lot with my Big Ben stacks. So look for me to get to Eric Ebron. Gus Edwards, I'm not on the Gus Edwards train either. I don't like him at all. Even if Dobbins does come back and Ingram comes back, I've, Gus Edwards is going to be out of this offense. I'm just looking past him easily. Going down to Marquise Brown. Marquise Brown has not been himself this season. I mean, three targets, seven targets, five targets, but look at the receptions, two, three, and one, and zero. I'm not on the Marquise train, but he's going to have to step up. Given Willie Sneed is now out with COVID. So he's going to be RG3's main target. So I could look to him as a value. I don't mind it at all at 5,800. But I'd much rather get to a $1,000 cheaper in a guy like Des Bryant, who is elite. He's elite not this season, but he has elite presence. He could easily step up and mean this one number one guy on the team as a receiving option. I don't mind Des Bryant at all. Kickers are going to be a value on this slate also, given the team total. I don't mind them. James Washington's is basically out of this offense. I'm on him. Duvernay, I'm more so looking at Des Bryant. I'm not on the Ravens' defense either against the Steelers. The guy I want to talk about, though, is Anthony McFarland. He's an explosive back as when he gets when he gets on the field. We've seen him at Maryland in his college days. He looked good. I think he's going to have to step up, and he'll see more attempts now with um, James Carter now out. If they don't want like what they see in Biddy Snell, they could easily pivot to Anthony McFarland, which is the value I'm locking and loading. This is my core four with Ben Roethlisberger, Eric Ebron, Robert RG3, and Anthony McFarland. You have, you'll have to play around with who you do with the wide receivers and kind of go from there. So that's pretty much wraps up for me, guys. Hit the like button for me. 
Subscribe to my YouTube channel that helps me out a lot. And let's hope this game plays and have a good and safe rest of your day. Have a good one, everybody.